Now let's take a look at the topics to be discussed in the basic course on Android Studio. We'll start by learning more about the Android system itself. We'll analyze how applications work, how the platform is built, and learn about the tools used to create applications. Using them, we'll be able to use our time more effectively while creating applications of the highest quality. We'll create a very simple application which will present some basic issues, such as creating activities, communication between activities, or handling views. We'll also get to know the resources mechanism and learn how they work on various devices. Thanks to this, even after the basic course, you'll have mastered issues such as activity, intent, resources, layout. Armed with this knowledge, we'll move on to create a more complex application. To do expert. This application is used to manage tasks. It serves as an overview of tasks related to Android and shows how the application creation process takes place in steps. Let's see what our application will look like in practice. Right after the launch, we are welcomed by the login screen. Login takes place on the server. After entering sample login information, there appears the main part of the application, the task list. After clicking the refresh action, we get a list of tasks stored in our server for the specific logged in user. We can also notice that we've received a notification about 81 new tasks. Notifications are one of the topics concerning our application, which we'll thoroughly discuss. We'll also have the possibility to create entirely new tasks by adding the task text and the finished flag. The task we've added is immediately placed on the server and additionally saved to our local database. Thanks to this, we'll be able to check the task status right away. We can also log out and switch the user. If we log in as another user, we get the task list assigned to this user's profile. This seemingly simple application allows us to deal with many important topics. These include, for instance, the more advanced layouts, transitions between activities, returning data from one activity to another. We'll also learn about things I use on an everyday basis. HTTP connections, downloading data from a server, writing to the database, as well as various adapters and lists. The downloaded data will be saved to shared preferences and the database. It will enable us to store large amounts of data, which can be quickly used the moment we need it. To avoid blocking the application, we'll use async task and services that make it possible to execute long-term tasks without the need to start an activity at the given time. Finally, we'll learn about the ways of informing the users that new data has appeared. To do this, we'll create notifications and handle the broadcast receiver mechanism, which enables us to inform that new tasks are downloaded. Let's learn together.